Cyclist.io Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of You Deserve Fresh Lettuce. I am your co-host Rachel. And I'm Delia. And in this episode we're going to be talking about... Preparing for the big D word. Preparing for divorce. If you're not following us yet on social media, please do at YDFL Podcast. You can also check out our episodes on... YouTube. On Spotify, iHeartRadio. You could even ask... Alexa, Alexa to play the latest episode of the You Deserve Fresh Lettuce podcast. podcast. All right, let's go. Oh, wait, like, subscribe, follow, yes. share with three friends. Especially on YouTube. If you guys Please. are engaged, they think that no one cares. So show us you care. Yeah. Sharing is caring. Sharing is always caring. All right, so here in this episode, it's a little bit more of a serious one, but I'm sure we're, we're here. We're here drinking tequila. We'll see how it goes. But we are going to be talking about preparing for, for divorce. divorce. What do you got to know? What can you expect? What should you do? Do you have any... A tip off the top? Yes, I do. <laughs> and it's like the biggest tip I can give anybody. And anytime anybody calls me, I'm like, listen to me. If you are not amicable about this, nobody <gasps> yes. wins but, but the, the attorneys. Yes. Now, I'm sorry for the attorneys that are banking or like laughing their way to the bank. Buying planes? for Buying planes, for sure and for real, is... I'm, I'm sorry for them because I'm, like, kind of exposing it. But <laughs> at the end of the day, real, 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 real talk, nobody wins here but, but the, attorneys. the attorneys. So what I always say to anyone is, like, put your finances on a piece of paper. Who gives what? Who, who puts what in? Who gives what? And, and basically just kind of go down the line. Now, you're always going to run into the husband or the wife that, you know, they're kind of crazy and they don't want to they just want to be, fight. yeah, they want to fight. They're not going to be amicable about it. But at the end of the day, just really think about what you're gaining, what you're losing. And honestly, it's not worth the fight. So it really isn't. Yeah. So, you know, you have to prepare. Um, I think the biggest preparation is like the kids. Um, but at the top of the list is definitely financials um, to see, yes. you know, what is owed what you guys have, the assets, kind of dividing those types of things. Who's going to have the kids during what holidays, what weekends. Um, most of the time, neither parent wants to do the 50-50 custody. One parent wants more of the custody. That's really hard. I know that for, you're exactly right. I know that for me personally, when I went through my divorce, I created sort of an agreement. It was okay. like a, it was like a pre- like divorce a agreement. Type of it thing. was, but it was like a pre-divorce agreement. So I, there's an actual name. Oh, it's called like a non-dispute divorce. Um, oh, okay. And so it's a non-dispute agreement. And so what I did was I just kind of did exactly what you said. I made a checklist of the things that I felt that I felt were fair mm -hmm. and that I felt were sort of needed, and it was in line with visitation, um, everything, all the way up to college, by the way. And so what I put in mind was I basically said, look, I. I'm not seeking um, financial compensation, but if you if you are sort of ordered or whatever to do, let's just say 500 bucks per kid, because in California that was like the minimum at the time, mm -hmm. then then it needs to be at least until the youngest is out of school, out of college, which is like 21, even okay. if they don't go to college. Okay. Because the assumption is with the cost of living in California, they'll probably still be with me yeah. at that age. Absolutely. And so there was like this assumption. So I wasn't even seeking for life, even though... Um, I was eligible for a lifetime of potential compensation, but the reality is, you know, he was unemployed at the time and I was not unemployed at the time. So at the end of the day, this is what worked out for the both of us for to do it this way. Yeah. But if you know ahead of time and you could be fair yeah. and go, what's the bare minimum? So it's like, what are the must haves and right. like, what would be nice? Right. And then come to that person with it. We didn't really negotiate. It was like, this is what it is. And then he pretty much kind of signed it. He did mention a couple things. And then once I filed, I attached that document. Yeah. And then that's easier. But there are yeah. things that, you know, people will do. And, and there's even like the, the reality show. I think it was what, what the housewives was at Beverly Hills where she had no idea. She had like a whole on like football so team. Sutton stack, so Sutton yeah, Stack. So Sutton Stack, she know. basically yeah. was saying that, you know, she just trusted her husband they were married for so many years she when just, you're in a wealthy relationship which 99.99 percent of you watching this do not know that experience um they basically told her 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 forensic accountant and everything said 
you have so many things in your name because he would go to her and just say, here, sign this. Mm. And when you're in really high, the really high, high level profile. marriages, there's a lot of signing going on. Right. And a lot of the wives uh, admitted during that session that they often don't read through what the husbands are having them sign because they're like, I trust my husband, number one. And number two, if they suddenly turn around and go, yeah, I need to get a lawyer to look at this before I read it. Now the husband's going to that's going to be a fight. Yeah, no, it's a red flag for the husband too. It's like, what do you mean you don't trust yeah. me? I trust yeah. you, right? Yeah. But I do think, you know, moving, you know, talking about preparing for divorce, those are one of the main things. I also would say, and I would suggest like if you have anything that's you know that maybe you you have as gifts, maybe you got a Rolex watch for your, like your 5th year anniversary, maybe diamond earrings or whatever. I mean, you have to take those things into consideration. They are gifts, so technically they are yours. But I think if you don't want to ruffle feathers it, and both of you guys can be amicable and talk about the things, then to say, okay, well, the jewelry that you own is yours. The jewelry that I own is mine. And then kind of divvy up the cars, divvy yep. up the house, divvy up, you know, the holidays, like we said, and all those things. Because I think there's nothing worse than actually going to court and having a fight. Because my experience has been really rough. I think I fought for, like, not by choice, nine and a half years. And it was like, yeah. please, I would plead and plead and plead to just stop. And there was continuances after continuances. And the thing is, the attorneys usually are really smart and they can gauge where your fight is and they can gauge, you know, your financial situation. So then they'll kind of, they'll just Keep literally attack attack them attach themselves like leeches yeah. and they're like okay they're gonna fight and it's crazy because you talk to any attorney every attorney depending on the scope of the job naturally though will give you a different retainer amount so you know a normal retainer is between five to ten thousand dollars now if you're fighting for you know three four years that thing is going to turn you're into like 50 hundred thousand real quick and if you think about the amount of money that you're going to spend on the attorneys Versus just literally saying, you know, honey, here's 50 for you and here's 50 for me. Or even you as a woman saying, you know what, sometimes it's a little unfair to say, I don't even want to open the books. This is all I want. I know I can get a job. It's not a big deal. And we move on. But if you're going to fight, you better be ready for the fight. And, okay, so speaking about jobs. So I really think number two on this whole thing is... If you're gonna get a divorce, you need to prepare to work. Like you need to prepare to get a job. Like yeah. you need to prepare to not be able to quote retire Off on that year. guy's money. Yeah. He views it as his money, by the way. Yeah. Like plain and simple. Everything's, Everything's his, his, money. his, by the way. And he made you. Yeah. P.S. You just you walk, talk, yeah. and breathe because he made because you. of him. Yeah. Just know that. He doesn't okay. forever. Yeah. He's just, gonna. He made you on period. Okay. We're like the end. Okay. <laughs> bye. End. See you next week. <laughs> See you next season, guys. Yeah. And it, and, it, and, and that's it really literally is. how yeah, the really operation is. goes. Yes. Um, so you have to be prepared to go to work. Um, and you're probably thinking, uh, no, because that's to take care of the kids. You have to prepare to make money some way, somehow. I will tell you, back to that episode with Sutton Stack, um, her attorney told her something brilliant. She says, if you're a woman, woman of a certain stature, again, now we're going to go to those 1%, like tippy top 1%. And you are going to feel the impact. You're not going to land softly on your feet necessarily. So you don't know if this man's going to go to war with you. It might have been his fault and the whole thing, but he will I know potentially go to war with you. I'm like, that's me. So the advice he gave her was find a couple friends who are willing to loan you $100,000 each. It was something like that wow. um, because it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time to go through the finances, to go through like all the litigation and everything because it's not that simple. The more money you have, all you ladies are out there, every single woman is looking for the same little tiny, teeny, tiny batch of men are the ones that are making money. But everyone, even the woman probably mopping the floors here at this building, like everyone's dreaming of, oh my gosh, I could probably get the man with money. Well, let me tell you, when you do get that, there's more to fight over. And even if he had nothing when you met him and yeah. you build something together, there's even more to fight over. So right. he was saying, be prepared that when you exit, everything's kind of frozen. So you need to borrow, ha- have some friends in your corner that are willing to loan you money, money, a place to live. Wow. There's this whole plan. And then you can pay them back if you know the award's going to be substantial. Yeah, yeah. I know that, you know, there are people that are fair, by the way, because I know of someone specifically that um, actually got divorced because, you know, he was with someone in his staff and part of his staff. And he divorced her and didn't even 
didn't fight her. She wanted a substantial amount of money, like such a substantial amount of money that most people make what she was asking per month. They make that per year. And guess what? He never argued, said anything, literally signed on the dotted line. She wanted the house in Palm Springs. Here you go. They wanted the house here. Okay, no problem. Literally just said, you know what? I know that if I don't do this at the end, nobody wins. Yeah. But the attorneys. And I think it was really smart just because I think it was his his it was his wrongdoing and not that not that you should lose because it was your wrongdoing i think what's fair is fair but if you're in the state of california unfortunately fortunately like no it's thing. it's it is what it is and 50% is for the man and 50% is for the woman and sometimes you know women get the upper hand but i do feel that if you know that you're going to get a divorce and you've been a housewife or you see things aren't going the right way and you know that divorce is forthcoming and it's inevitable i do think it's very important that you try to find a way to make money like there is something that you're good at. What is it? And right. maybe take an online course. Maybe join mm-hmm. a group. Maybe mm-hmm. join some type of a community to allow you to open up your mind. Because maybe 20 years ago, there was no way to actually make money off your phone, like at all. But I think now we're coming into an era and a time where, you know what? There's so many applications. There's so many ways to actually make money versus just waiting for the guy to you know just because you're awarded a certain amount of money by the way to um to be given to you for child support alimony whatever it is doesn't mean he's going to comply and do what he's supposed to do so guess what you got to figure it out anyway that's and, the, and that's, that's the harsh that's, reality that's what it is you could actually win the thing that keeps maintains the lifestyle in the house you raised your kids and all these kinds of things it doesn't mean that then he's going to come through every single month with those payments right and it's getting more and more difficult women are fighting for equal rights well part of that means go get a job and Delia is talking about this whole, you know, learn how to do things, you know, link in bio. That's all I'll say. Yeah. But exactly. um, but at the end of the day, you know, there is a lot of opportunities. However, I think there's a little bit of a delusion happening with a lot of women, even in this day and age. Right. That they're thinking, well, I'll get divorced. He's going to have to pay me half. He has to pay me child support. He has to pay me alimony. Right. And at the end of the day, you may be awarded it, but he may not, not come through. He may put everything he owns today in his, in his mama's name. In his mama's name. Yeah. And then you're not going to get no. anything. Okay? And, and you have to prepare for that so that means that you have to figure out how you're going to build yourself back up that means if you are good at uh, baking at cooking whatever whatever it is is, like then you start to work in those things that you absolutely have a passion for and start to make money and a lot of you are not going to have the runway you are going to be reactive you're going to catch them cheating whatever the situation is you're going to pack your bags you're going to leave and in that moment, there's yep. no runway. There is no time to learn these things. There is no, you have to go figure out how you're going to get a job. You're going to be living with people, borrowing money, whatever well, it might be. And that's the reason why a lot of the time, you know, women don't leave after the first time that he cheats or the yeah. second time that he cheats or what have you. Because guess what? They're they stuck. need to have the runway. But but here's what happens. And, this, and I've seen it firsthand also, by the way. He cheats. He promises he's never going to do it again. And then you say, I'm going to prepare, right? Because you wouldn't see a rainstorm coming and you wouldn't just go out with your shorts and a tank top. You would prepare. But then they get so comfortable again that they forget what he did and now they're not preparing. That means, you know, getting a separate account, maybe under your sister's name, under your mom's name, and putting some money away for those things. For the fact that, you know, he may leave you high and dry. He may just you know, dry up all the accounts and give you nothing. And then you're awarded a certain amount for child support or what have you. And then all of a sudden he doesn't, he doesn't care to go to jail. He doesn't care to go. And you know, he has a, what is it? Contempt on him. He doesn't care. He'll go to jail. Like a lot of, he a just lot of doesn't guys aren't want to really pay care. you. And yeah. so you got to prepare. You have to go out there and, and join this community of women and join, you know, all these things in order for you to say, okay, this woman isn't maybe that educated, but this is what she's doing, I could do that too. Or some of you are very educated, but you put your careers on hold because you wanted to have your children, you wanted to be a a quote unquote great wife and be present for him. Or maybe he was, you know, he had a great job where he traveled a lot and you got to travel with him and you have to be at his disposal as far as time. There's a lot of reasons, right? Your kids are in private school. You just want to be a great mother and you've gotten to do that. When you go through divorce, you have to know it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, even if you do start your own business or you do whatever, it's going to take time it does. and it's going to take pain, meaning you're going to possibly have to downsize. You're going to have to be uncomfortable 
before you get comfortable again and before you shape your new normal. Yep. The goal is you will have a new normal. We're here to tell you we have a whole show after divorce. Um, you know, you could read each of our bios in the link and you could learn about us and learn how we're essentially thriving after divorce, but we understand it's difficult. Not everybody can do that, and actually, everybody can do that, by the way, but not everybody will because they're either gonna be too scared to make that journey, but you have to be willing to be uncomfortable, and that is really tough. I mean, even myself, that I consider myself a very optimistic, sort of strong yeah. person, there were moments where I'm like, what did I do? Look, you know, I'm putting my kids through this. Like now we're moving here or doing this. And like, and there's a lot of sort of doubt and self, like negative self talk. Yeah. And, and it's the unknown. Yeah, it's the unknown. And for me, I got divorced when the economy was really bad. So even though I had all these years of experience and everything, everyone's like, yeah, no. And I had to take a job that paid me half. It was still in the six figures, thank God. Yeah. But it paid me half of what I was normally being yes, paid. Yeah for the same work, if not more, 12 hours a day. Wow. And so it's those things though that drive us forward and you have to say, okay, is all of this pain and struggle and strife worth it is to not be in a relationship with someone that you cannot trust, who disrespects you, who's cheating on you, maybe he beats you, you know, all of these things, you have to really weigh the odds. You have to yeah. just weigh your I, options. I, in my opinion, I, I do feel that for the amount of time that we're here, and I'm not I'm not an advocate for divorce. We are not advocates no. for divorce. On the contrary, we think you should try to work it out. If you can, try to work it out. However, I do believe that, you know what, if you already see this fourth, you see this is coming, there's a storm coming, yeah. you need to prepare for it. And, you know, if you're starting to see, like, how short life is, because in reality, I mean, nothing's guaranteed. And so it's do you not. really want someone to be chasing you, hitting you? Maybe you're, you know, you're sleeping, you're not sure. What if the guy comes in, tries to, you know, you hear all the stories, by the way. These guys are like freaking batshit crazy. And some girls are batshit crazy too, though. And speaking, but, of, speaking of hearing stories, I was actually in Los Angeles um, about two weekends ago now. Yeah. And we were helping a friend out and um, she was moving and one of her friends came and she's British and lovely woman. They live in an amazing building, very expensive expensive sort of exclusive building that they live in in this great part of town and she was telling me um that she was married 40 years it was like wow. a full-blown raise the kids sent them to college the did the whole thing. thing did the thing and then here she thought they were gonna like grow old together wait for the grandkids to come and he looked at her and said I just can't do this anymore oh, he did done. the YOLO thing he was like or the YODO you only die once. once he was like I just I want something different for my life and but but which is devastating by the way because yeah. she was thinking okay like um but he pays for her to live in that building um he pays for her vehicles basically her entire lifestyle is still financed by this man he said i'm not going to fight you on a single thing you don't deserve that he understood she didn't deserve that yeah, because maybe. how difficult is it going to be for her to find companionship maybe at that age and stuff like that yeah. you know there is there are people and there are obviously ways but you know as a woman that's growing old you did all those years with your husband i think the last thing you're thinking is like now i want to start over it's almost like well you know it's kind of rough and out then there. not to mention you know imagine 40 years ago because i mean you know i i was i was married a short span of time compared to 40 yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like online dating is a thing and imagine for her it's like now uh, you know and then now you're changing the ranges because that's something that i've i've encountered right oh it's God. like uh, you're changing the, the age, ranges of the age, age and ranges. now you're like and then and then it's, by the way the guys are lying so they're like not that's really the in their 50s move. and they're like really in their 60s and then they're trying to come back down to kind of be uh, at your age 49 range. you're like you're like you are he puts 49 and you're like if this dude said he was 60 i would <laughs> I know would he was still, still lying you know I would still not believe yeah, that. yeah but um but anyway you know these are the things that you're going to encounter you know if you're preparing for this in the future because obviously you want to take some time because you know i always say divorce is kind of like a death um it it's it's like you have to mourn that and then you have to move on but at the end of the day like i can't stress this enough Try your best to get the attorneys out of it. Yes. There's no reason to have to drag this on. No. If you already know that, you know, you're willing to go out there and work and do your thing, you don't need him to support you and, and give you no. alimony. I mean, he may not even ever give that to you. So you have to prepare for that. Yes. So that means, you know, if you need special bank accounts, you need to have a place to jewelry, put ladies. your jewelry away at your mom's house, your sister's house, someone that you trust. 
Um, that means opening a separate account, like I just said, and just putting a little rainy day money in Crypto there. Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency, Get yes. Your Bitcoin all on, that stuff. You yep. have to be ready for it. I mean, <laughs> I will say, it is what um, it is. you know, I think really, if you're still in a relationship and you're kind of one foot out, I, I hope that we're giving you, a, a, it's kind of a worst case scenario in a sense, because it's very important that you accept that that is a potential reality. You could be fit, you could be beautiful, you could be all these things. I know when Delia got divorced, or I got divorced like the year before her, like when I got divorced, I can tell you everyone, even in his camp said, this woman's going to be married in a year. Like everyone thought it. So don't look in the mirror. Or don't go out, you know, thinking, well, I look good. Like I could, or go out in the streets and you have every Tom, Dick and Harry hitting on you. Cause when you're single and you get divorced, you it's have different. to do it with the mindset of, am I willing to leave this man knowing that I may never meet another guy that's worthy of my time and effort and energy and heart and whatever. Can you do it knowing you're okay if you go off into the sunset single for the rest of your life? Doesn't mean lonely. Cause you can have companionship without yeah. marriage, yeah. but I'm talking about a mindset of, not jumping thinking I have to find the next one right because if you do that you're gonna fall into all kinds of treachery you're gonna end up with another loser who is worse than the father of your own I kids know. and then all the time I think with what you're saying you always think if I didn't put up with that guy oh, yeah I am not putting up with you and then it's easier for you to do that too by the way and it's easy for yes. you to just go like 10 years like we are 10 years deep of like not having <laughs> anyone specifically no, to say that, like, you know, yeah. because at the end of the day, you're like, I didn't go through all this to then put up with to your BS. Like I'm not yes. doing that. So, I mean, I don't want to say that we're jaded cause it's not, I think no. it's like we're woke and I think you become woke. And I think that initially it, it's really easy to think, well, you know, I'm going to give myself some time, but maybe here in the next couple of years or two, three years from now, maybe I'll find someone but I think if you just live your life and enjoy yes. this moment of being single, if you do decide to take that that leap of faith of just saying I'm done, then just enjoy that moment. Don't That's think about like tomorrow, next year, next month, who will it be, yeah. how, what, what, what. Prepare yourself right now. Prepare yourself for impact because it is literally like mourning a death. It's a, it's a massive adjustment. For some of you, you guys are in really difficult, oppressive relationships so getting you might be in a big beautiful house but getting that two bedroom condo might be the biggest most peaceful thing you've ever, ever had, had in had your life done. yes and let me tell you there are some rewards depending on your situation um but i will say you know don't do, just don't sugarcoat it understand social media is sugarcoating things right reality tv is sugarcoating things ladies. or you worry or sometimes you know that you're in a dead end relationship maybe you, your significant other is being very ex extremely abusive and he cheats on you and he does all the things and then you're worried about what the tia is going to say what the tio is going to say what the grandmother is going to say the mom because and sometimes you have brothers and sisters that you know will come down at you like what are you doing and like yes. it's all your fault and you're the you know and people want to call you out to be the bitch but in reality maybe sometimes you hide it and people yeah. don't really know what you're going through and that's yeah. the hard part about it, in my opinion it makes it really tough i think that if um if there is but then there's the scenario right that where there is no adultery, there is no abuse. People are just, just 30 years in going, I can't I do this goodness. anymore. And I want to go so you know, find you know, sow my oats or do whatever it's called afterwards. And that's a weird situation as well. And I always sort of ward against that. Like I always say, oh, ladies, you know, like if you're of a particular age and you're just leaving your husband because you just don't want to do it anymore. Like, you know, you know what it is when, when, when uh, people do that? Because I've had calls, because I'm not the therapist, by the way, but I get the calls, and I always say, what's going on? And then they'll say, it's just not there anymore, because you get so used to the person, and now you want something new and exciting, but let me tell you, that something new and exciting will get old, too. So you might as well spruce up what you have, and yeah. I can't stress this enough, like, take a weekend vacation without the kids yeah and we say this and we've said this many times get the kids out of the bedroom if they're sleeping in your room go out on that vacation you know put it on the freaking credit card go to Cabo go yeah. to wherever and just really try 
to get back to center. Like, why is it that you fell in love with this person? Go back to the yeah. dating part of it. Like, when you were so excited to see them on the weekends. But also accept the fact that it's not about being in love all the time. Right. That's not what partnerships are. It's a com- you, When you got married, you made a commitment to the, to commitment. the commitment. That is it. Like, That's so true. That is it. If you, you happen to get loving I feelings, love yeah, if you happen to get some warm and fuzzy feelings here and there, Everywhere, cool, lucky you. If you yeah. happen to be one of those couples that you, you know, you have SEX, you know, every day and it's fine or the, great for you. Like, keep that going because guess what? At the end of the day, you're not always going to get along. You're not, people but change. But then there's also the people that don't ever want to have sex. And that could be a problem too. You okay, know, there's, No, I know. I'm just saying like, this is reality. It you know, there are, there are people that, you know, they get it into is. this marriage. The men thinks like, the men think like, oh yeah, we're going to do this every day. And then all of a yeah. sudden the girl's like, yeah, no. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's like she doesn't feel like it. He's actually bored with it. And it's yeah. just that, but guess what? This is marriage. And we're not saying stick it out. But what we are saying is don't let the media, social media, your friends, whoever, sugarcoat what single life is. Because although, yeah, we're thriving and everything, I think part of why we can do that is because we're not attached to the stigma of single means something's wrong with us and that is a big thing you're going to have your married female friends you're married their husbands are gonna be like oh you see you see that something must be wrong with her because she's not even married yet yeah because they don't want their wives to look up to this the newly divorced lady that's the last thing they want yeah yeah you Get know? your chickens in place. You're going to fly the coop. <laughs> so at That's the end of the day, so just know it's not easy no matter what you choose. It's Whether you not. choose to stay or you choose to go, it's not going to be easy. But if you can find a way to thrive in your marriage and fly and, and build a career while you're still married, you know, build a business while, you'll, while, you're, while your kids are still around or whatever the situation is with your husband, kind of weigh those options out. Unless we always say, if you're in a physically abusive relationship, obviously do everything you can to get out. Don't worry about it. Yeah. But other than that, plan your runway, be strategic. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like I said earlier, you wouldn't go out, if there was a storm coming, you wouldn't go out with flip-flops and a tank top. Like, you would be prepared. So if you see this is coming, prepare for impact. It's a bug out bag. Get your bug out bag. And if you're going to prepare for impact, be reasonable. Calm down to your senses. Yeah. Don't get attorneys involved. Put it all on the table and then just go about your merry way. Nobody wins. It's a loss. It's a death. Divorce is a death with a D. So Divorce hope we didn't with a D. <laughs> Divorce with a D. But um and it's a death. But we hope we didn't confuse you guys, but just prepare for impact. Boop. That's it. See you next week. Right, and cheers. remember, you, you deserve, deserve fresh, fresh lettuce. lettuce. Cheers. cheers.